Hey guys, welcome back to another iOS tutorial. Today I'll show you how to develop this circular loader animation using the SwiftUI framework. The animation contains a circle track and an inner circle which rotates and expands in a loop. Let's start by creating a new iOS app. Set the name as circle loader and select SwiftUI as the interface. If you have been following my tutorials, you'll know that I like to restructure my files into several groups and subgroups. It helps me to manage the project as it scales up. I'll start with the refactoring and you can follow along and create the groups likewise. If you follow a different setup, feel free to skip this part. We'll add two subgroups inside the common group, extensions and utils. Move assets and preview content to another group called resources. If you try building the project, it will fail. We need to update preview contents path in the build settings. We'll append iOS and resources here. All right, let's move over to the content view. Refactor and change the name to main view. Next, we'll add some annotations for the views and the variables and change this name to main view. Next, select utils and add a file called colors. We'll add all the colors that we'll use here. Here, we have added two sets of colors for each circle along with the system label and background. Let's import the SwiftUI framework as well. Now select extensions and add a Swift file for color extensions. We'll add a code snippet to help us use hex based colors. You can find these code snippets in the description box below. Now let's head over to the main view. Remove all the code inside the body and add a Z stack. Let's add a background color and we'll use the ignoring safe area modifier and pass dot all. Next we'll add a Z stack to contain our circular loader. Let me show you how stacks work in general. Add two colors, red and green. So even though we have added red, only green is visible. And that's because Z stack lays out content on top of each other and the order of the view matters. You can override this behavior with the help of the Z index modifier. Let's give both the colors some height and we'll also apply the offset modifier to green. There it is. By shifting green downwards, we can once again see red. Though if you have to lay down the content one after the other vertically, it's better to use a V stack. Similarly, H stack lays out the content horizontally. If we remove the frame modifier, the views will occupy all the available space. The height of a child view always depends on the outermost container. Now, if you have to set the height for both colors, then it's better to apply the modifier to the outer Z stack. Alright then, let's get back to our animation. Add a frame modifier to the inner Z stack and pass 250. Now we'll add the variables required for the animation. I'll tell you what each of them does once we start writing the functions. The inner circle needs three straight variables, circle start, end and rotation degree. We'll add a variable for linear gradient and we'll use the colors that we define in the utils file. Linear gradient takes an array of colors, start and end point. Let me show you how linear gradient works. But before that, let me add a circle and we'll use the gradient using the fill modifier. Our track colors are variations of white and it will be hard to notice the difference. So let's change it to red and green. Like the anchor settings, red starts from the top and green from the bottom. If we change the start anchor to leading, you can notice an immediate change in our gradient. Similarly, if we change endpoint to trailing, the gradient will span from left to right. We can also use a combination like bottom trailing, bottom leading, etc. Alright, undo everything and we'll continue. 
We need one more set of gradients for the inner moving part of the animation. We'll pass the two remaining colors that we defined in the colors util here. We'll use stop leading and trailing as the anchors. Lastly, we'll need two more variables, one to keep track of the rotations and the other to time the animation. So we'll use the stroke modifier to convert the circle into a path and then we'll apply the gradient. Let's add some shadows using the shadow modifier. Radius X and Y determines the depth and the direction of the shadow. Next, let's add one more circle and we'll use our state modifiers to apply animations to this shape. The trim modifier trims the shape to specific points. It's hard to notice the difference because shapes are filled by default. Let's convert it into a path using the stroke modifier. We'll use stroke style and pass line width and line cap. And now you can see the effect of using trim. Next, we'll apply the fill and the rotation modifier. Okay, so the base views are ready. Circle start and end variable decides the position of the inner circle. When you change the from value, the circle expands from the right side. Similarly, when you change the to value, the circle expands from the left side. We'll get a semicircle when you change the values to 0 and 0.5. One thing to note is that the start value has to be less than the end value, otherwise the path rendering will fail. Okay, let's reset the values to its initial state. Now let's add the on upper modifier and this is where we'll write the code for the animation. Let's add a function called getRotationAngle and this function returns the angle to rotate the inner circle. Okay, so 360 spins the circle once and we are also using the tracker variable to rotate the view as many times as needed. We'll use this function to set the value of the rotation degree variable. I'll tell you why we need this 120 degree shortly. Now we just need to add the animation function. Let me finish writing it and I'll explain what each line does step by step. We'll mostly use the with animation block to apply animations to the inner circle. There are various timing curves that you can use to personalize your animation. I am using spring here. Animations like these require some delay because we have to animate the properties in an order. You can use a timer, dispatch group or whatever you like. One thing to note is that since it's a looping animation, we need to reset the variables to the initial state for it to work correctly. As such, we'll end the function by resetting the values so that the animation can continue in a loop. Now let's add this function inside the onAppear block and it will start the animation. The one last thing that we have to do is to add a timer to restart the animation. Before we do that, let me tell you what the code inside the animation function does. Let's comment all the code except the first with animation block. So this block moves the inner circle to the right side by changing the rotation degree. You can also change the circle end to increase the size of the loader. Now there's a delay in this block and it's based on the animation duration. Then the loader rotates based on the value received from the above function. If we set this variable to 1, the circle will rotate once. Likewise if we set it to 3, this happens. The rotation angle function multiplies and returns the degree based on the tracker rotation. Let's remove the 120 degrees addition and see where the loader ends. Okay, so it ended towards the right side and the animation won't work properly because it expects to start from the left. 
let's add it back now let's uncomment the third timer this time function expands the circle loader from the left side the timer starts at 125 because we want the expansion to happen while the rotation animation is active and lastly as i said before the last time I researched the value so that the animation can continue in a loop. Here we reset the value of the circle and variable to reduce the length of the circle loader. The key thing to note here is that we are reassigning the value of the rotation degree variable instead of adding it like before. Let's comment this line of code and add the looping animation inside the honor pair and we'll see what happens. We'll add the sum of the below animations as the time interval for this timer and set the repeat mode to true. Inside the timer, we'll simply call the animate function again. Oh, okay, this happens if you don't reset the rotation degrees. We need this line of code to reflect the exact position where the loader ends so that it doesn't affect the loop. Yeah, all set. You can play around with the values of the variables to customize your animation. Let's build the project and run this animation in the simulator. Alright, that's the end of the tutorial. I hope you liked it and are now interested in creating your own animation. If you are new, consider subscribing, leave a like and let me know what you think of this tutorial and the animations in the comments below. Until next time, bye.